Hey kids, welcome to MCS at Home. I'm Mr. Knitter, a sixth grade teacher at Mitchell Nielsen Elementary. And uh, hello there, audience. Uh, I'm Mr. Ridgely. I teach at Hobgood Elementary, and uh, we're glad that you're joining us today. Uh, Mr. Ridgely, you know, Sunday, whoo, man, how much rain did we get? Uh, it, it uh, you know, at my house, I have a rain gauge, and I've got over four inches collected. Four inches. Well, I noticed today on the news there was a lot of streets in Murfreesboro and Rutherford County that were flooded. So I noticed that know, as well, yes. At times yesterday, it looked like it was raining cats and dogs. Cats and, oh, you mean cats, dogs, and rabbits? Well, I didn't see any rabbits, but to you be didn't said so. I you didn't see it. this cloud in the sky at your house? Take a look at that. What's that look like, Mr. Well, Mayor? Well, it does look like Peter Rabbit, Mr. Rizzo. <laughs> yes. Where, where did you see that? That was in the sky. Uh, it wasn't yesterday. The okay. clouds were too uh, too low and uh, too gray for yesterday. But uh, anyways, you know, if you just look up in the in the sky, sometimes you'd be surprised at what you might see. Well, you know, that would be something the next couple of days. Hopefully, the sky is going to clear, and we'll be able to see some clouds like that. You, but that was that was a pretty interesting one there. That was sure. an interesting one. You know, most of the time. Uh, people are looking down nowadays, but if we could just get them to look up and maybe um, after uh, our, our, our performance today here at uh, Channel 3, uh, we can get students to go outside and maybe look up and see what they can see in the sky. Um, this next uh, cloud you'll be interested in Oh, wow, to see. that is What's really that look like? cool. Well, that looks like a horse to me. <laughs> What, about, what do you see, though? I see, I see a horse, okay. yeah. I don't have my glasses on, so maybe I'm not seeing what you see. Yeah, that's a horse. And that's then horse. what about this cloud right here? Check this one out. Oh, wow. Isn't that nice? That would be appropriate for Valentine's Day for sure. Obviously, that's a heart, right? That's a heart. That's I what love it looks the color, like. though. Did you Photoshop that? I didn't touch that one. Though. Huh? No, I didn't touch wow. that. That just must be the sunlight there. The sunlight causing that? I guess, yeah. Okay. You know, I've always been interested in clouds and what, what creates rain, what creates those shapes in the air. And um, today I thought I might share part of a story, um, an informational text that teaches us a little bit more about clouds. Have you, have you been interested in clouds before? Well, uh, my head's in the clouds sometimes, if that's what you mean. <laughs> yeah, but I've been told time, that as well. Well, so. you know, I'm a, I tell you what, though, it sounds to me like you might read to me. Well, let's do that. Well, you know, Mr. here's the book I brought today. I would like to share just part of this story. Um, it's called Clouds, and it's by Ann Rockwell. And the very first page in this book says this. You can learn a lot from looking at clouds. And that is indeed true, right? The shape of clouds and whether they're dark or bright can tell you how high they are and what kind of weather they will bring. All clouds are made of water and particles of dust that are just too small to even see. Well, I did notice several different types of clouds. They did not look the same, and there's some it looks like the clouds out there today, those dark ones. Right, so, and uh, they're very low in the, in, the, in the sky today as well. Um, on this page in the book, I would like to go through this. You know, it says that you can, um, you can tell the name of a cloud by how high they are in the sky. And in this picture right here that we're looking at, um, there are th the book goes on to tell us that there are three layers of clouds. The highest layer uh, is usually three to four miles high in the atmosphere. All of those clouds are very cold and frozen, and those, the names of those clouds are the cirrus cloud, which means when you see those clouds, those wispy clouds, just, you're just going to have sunny weather, no rain. The cirrostratus clouds, when we notice those clouds in the air, that it typically means that it might rain or snow in 24 hours. And then though, there are the cirrocumulus clouds. Um, and that means typically that a cold front is moving in. The middle layer of clouds there in that illustration there, you'll see those, those clouds are typically one to four miles high in the air. And they're, can, they contain part water and part ice. The two types of clouds in that layer are called Alto stratus, which when we see those clouds, sometimes it means it'll rain that night or the next day, or the alto cumulus cloud, which means a thunderstorm is beginning to build. Well, now I do see a thunderstorm over there on the left. What type of cloud did you say that was? Well, that that uh, cloud is the cumulonimbus, and that is part of the lowest layer of clouds, and that's probably what we saw yesterday. Those clouds are less than two miles high, 
and they usually bring rain and sometimes storms. So which cloud layer do the planes fly through? Because I know when I'm on a plane, it's always fun to you know, fly through a cloud. Yeah, well, the, the highest level of clouds are three to four miles high, and those are your cirrus clouds. So if you're in an airplane going about 30,000 feet above um, the earth, you're probably flying through those cirrus clouds, those frozen, completely frozen cloud layers. Hmm. So interesting, right? Well, you mentioned Sunday night, mentioned the rain that we got. We got quite a bit of rain yesterday. And uh, those clouds, if we go to the next slide, you'll see um, the picture of that, that picture right there is kind of what we dealt with Sunday night, wasn't it? Wow, look at that wind. Do you think uh, flying a kite right there would be? Oh, oh, Mr. Knitter, uh, no, 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 no. Well, you wouldn't look at that wanna, wind, though. Uh, it would be a windy day for sure to fly a kite, but you know the, the um, dangerous part of that is you see the lightning in the, in the uh, sky there. True. That true. would be dangerous, very dangerous. But those types of clouds that we dealt with Sunday were those cumulonimbus clouds. So anyways, the story wraps up. It says that sometimes you see more than one kind of cloud in different parts of the sky at the same time. And that's because the wind is blowing away some of those clouds and bringing in new ones. And this means that the weather will change. Now, can I ask you a question? Sure. So we had all the rain yesterday, Sunday, and the clouds were very dark and overcast. I noticed on the forecast for the next several days, they had different colored clouds, like some big white fluffy ones and things like that, which would be the best to go out and sort of see to find a cloud in the sky. Well, you'd want to look for those, those big fluffy clouds, those cumulus clouds. Okay. And that's what we were taking a look at earlier, made those interesting shapes. And so now that we know a little bit about clouds, um, the next time you're outside, look up, look up in the sky, see if you can identify, recognize those types of clouds um, in the sky. And so you're telling me then I can predict the weather you can. by just watching the clouds? You can, yeah. Okay, yeah. interesting. Very interesting, very interesting. Well, let's, let's do a couple of investigations and see if we can um, um, maybe make a cloud and maybe make some rain. Make Wanna, a cloud. Make a cloud. And yeah. make it rain? And make it rain. I got to see this. All right. Well, let's, all right. Let's, let's give it a try, Mr. Knitter. All right. Yes, so, sir. All right. Well, so what we've got, we've got a couple of investigations today that um, we've put together and that, I, that we think that you could possibly easily do at home. And so the first investigation that we're going to do today is to make a cloud in a bottle. And you need just a few things to do that. I'm going to get a few things You let here. me know what I would. Yeah, that's OK. You're fine. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do, and the slide gives the materials. Uh, if, you'd like to be, if you'd like to try this at home, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use some warm water. Let me pour some hot water in here. We'll probably fill it about halfway, make it about half full of this nice warm water. You just tell me when I'm about halfway, Mr. Miller. Yes, sir. That would be it. All right, very good. And the next item that we're going to use is we're going to use some ice. And so we're going to take the top of the lid and place it on. Uh, top of the jar and then take this ice and we're going to put the ice on the lid and hold it on the lid there. All right. That's all right. Yeah, that's going to be a lot. Anyway, it doesn't take a lot of ice, but we want to put that on the lid there for a moment. And do you know what's happening inside the jar, Mr. Knitter? The warm water, you know what, what warm air does? It rises. So it's going to rise up and when it meets this cold uh, mass of air at the top of the jar, you know what's gonna happen then? It freezes. It's gonna get cold and start to condense. So that vapor is coming up and it's gonna condense. So the, the next part of this uh, investigation is we wanna, we wanna put something in there for those water molecules to attract to. So if you have an aerosol can at home, a hairspray or something like that, you're going to take that, you might need some help from an adult, and then you're just going to spray that in there real quick and cover it back up. Now we're going to give it just a second or two. You've got the board. <clears throat> and if you look in there, 
Can you see what's going on, Mr. Knitter? Well, there's whirling around. It's, it's, it's like a cloud swirling in the sky the last few days. Yes, it does. All right, and so then when we take the lid off, we're going to see a cloud. We're going to take the lid off? Take the lid off. I'm going right. to hold up this board so we can see it really good on the camera and Here. go right ahead. Here we go. How about that? There wow. is our cloud. Hey, did you see that? Did mm -hmm. you see that shape? No, I didn't. I missed it. Huh? What was it? I was it a rabbit? It, it was a rabbit. It was pulled it? a rabbit out of a jar instead wow. of a hat. All right. Well, that now that is really cool. <laughs> we've been talking about the, the the title of this program today is is that science? Is that math or is that magic? What would you say? Science, math, or magic for this one? I'd have to say go with science. Is that science. I, All right. I think so. I think so. Well, I, I got a question yeah. though. Okay. You used warm water. Warm water, yes, sir. Could we use cold water? That's a good question. You know what, uh, audience, you can try this at home and you can um, maybe experiment with the type of water that you put in there, maybe um, the type of aerosol can. Do you think that would matter? Well, you know, I was thinking air freshener when you said aerosol can, so mm -hmm. would that make it smell? It'd be a, that'd be a cloud that you'd love to smell. Like that's that. right, that's right, a lovely fragrant cloud. Um, so yeah, so this is science, and the, the warm, like you mentioned earlier, the warm air is rising to meet the cold air, it's condensing, and really the purpose of the aerosol is to give those water molecules something to attach to. Um, and when uh, the, the water molecules are up in a cloud, they're, they're attaching to dust, they're attaching to pollen, they're attaching to uh, microscopic things that we can't even see, and once they get, um, full and heavy, they start to fall to uh, the ground as in, in rain or snow or whatever. So that's okay. one investigation. Oh, that, was, that was really cool. Yeah. Didn't yeah. take long at all and made a cloud. Easy to do. Now I got to see you make it rain. Oh, ah, okay. Okay. Well, here we go. Let me see you make it rain. All right. So let's go ahead and um, let's, let's just put this over off to the side for now. And this next investigation, again, using simple materials that you probably have at home so audience if you um, get with your families and see if you can collect some of these things but we're going to use another jar this jar is, uh, has water uh, we're going to use a dropper with some food coloring and then some shaving cream okay all right so the the first step is we're going to fill this jar up almost to the top with water and then from there we're going to add a cloud this is what type of cloud does that look like? Curly Q. <laughs> like something from Dairy Queen, right? That's it. Um, Where's the cherry on top? Let's see here. So then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some food coloring. I chose blue. Now what made you choose blue? I thought it might look the most like rain. Could I use red? You could, yeah. Okay. You could. So it really doesn't matter. And then we're going to take a dropper. This dropper I'm going to pull some of that food coloring up into the dropper and then start to drop it around my cloud. And if you get real close, uh-oh, as soon as that cloud gets full enough, you'll start to see. Can you see that, Mr. Sure Nitter? Do. You are making it rain, Mr. Ridgeley. Right there, just like Sunday cool. night or Sunday all day long, four and a quarter inches of rain at my house. So I'm trying to see that bunny rabbit or that horse in there. Ah, uh, yeah, that is yeah. Beauty in the eye of the beholder, I guess. That is beautiful. And there you go. So, so real, real simple. Was math. that math? No. Science, science, and some magic? Mm, no real magic there. Mostly just science. Just and science. again, uh, those, those water vapors condense into the clouds, uh, start to. Uh, uh, just connect with dust particles, other microscopic par particles, and when they get heavy enough, it falls to the earth as rain. So l let me just ask you a question. Sure. Do um, you, th you think that if we use like a hair mousse, or I was thinking when I saw that, whipped cream. What would whipped cream uh, do? That's interesting. Well, again, audience, you can try that at home. Uh, maybe see if you can come up with some other types of things that you can uh, use in this type of investigation. So I'd oh, uh, love to hear, maybe, maybe we can hear from some folks about what they chose to do. I'm impressed okay. with you, Mr. Ridgely. You, you like really, I really, I'm impressed with you. Well, and so 
here's the thing. We want students, students want you guys to go outside, take a look up in the sky, and, and learn something about these clouds that are above us. So all this looking down, we need to start looking up again, right? And, and maybe they could fly a kite over the next couple of days. It's going to clear up. That, you and that kite. Well, you and that kite. it's been windy. Well, so. let's take a look at another um, uh, cloud and see what we see from this next cloud in there. Do we have the next image? Okay, great. Oh, oh okay. So, well, let, I forgot to mention this idea of, you know, scientists are really trying to uh, construct some ways to make it rain. And you probably know this, but out west, there's something called cloud seeding. And scientists are really um, interested in trying to make it rain in areas that don't get a lot of rain. And if you've ever been skiing, you know that uh, they have generators that push iodine up in the sky and try to make it snow so the slopes are ready to go. So you're telling me that you can make it rain? I, you know, I just showed you, yes. That's, mm -hmm. that's the best I can do. That's the well, best I can You can do. at least try. Okay. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, I know you're really interested in this flying kite business, and you know that there was a person, fam a famous person in American history that was actually um, mm -hmm. interested in flying a kite during a thunderstorm. You know what I'm talking about? Let me see. My best invitation. Ben Franklin. You got it. I'll look just like him. All right. Oh, whoa, wait I thought a second. you were going to take a $100 bill out and show Well, that yeah. would be nice. But that would be nice. not until the 15th. Well, so <laughs> moving into our next uh, section of um, investigations, I want to tell you a little bit about Ben Franklin. You know, he was probably one of the very first STEM teachers, and you know why, don't you? Because what did he enjoy? He, science. He loves science. Technology. Really? Which yep. is not computers, boys and girls. Technology is just anything that makes a job easier. Mm -hmm. Engineering. Engineering. Help me with the others. The, what you love to do most of all. What do you love to teach? Fly like kite. Oh, sorry. Math. Math, yeah. So he would, if he lived today, he would probably be an all-star STEM uh, teacher. And we would have him in Murfreesboro City Schools and have just his classes would be full of students learning lots about science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, but I have a story to share with you. You know, he developed something he called the magic square. Have magic, you ever heard of it? Yeah, it we're going to get to magic. that magic. Okay. Well, here's the interesting thing about uh, Mr. Franklin. You know, he also was he also was the first to go water skiing. Have you ever Seriously? heard that? Yes, first person to go water skiing. He had a kite on a windy day, got in the uh, lake. And He's a kite man. He's a kite I knew, man. I knew I liked him for a reason. Kite. Um, yes. So, anyways, he was he was so popular. He um, was a, a very good writer as well, and lots of people wanted him to to come and help them write bills, write laws, and things. And so he would go to um, different uh, political places and as communities were, were creating bills and laws, they asked him to come along and write down uh, what they were saying. Well, he loved to do that. The problem was with politicians and the people at the time, they had to debate everything. And so it took a long time before he really got a chance to write down the law or the bill. And so in the meantime, he would doodle and he would uh, find ways to keep from falling asleep during all these meetings. And he invented something called a magic square. Well, let's check this square? out. I got to see some magic. So during one of those long meetings, Ben Franklin sat there and he drew a three by three square and he decided he would just put random, put the numbers one through nine in random places to see what would happen. And so he might um, put an eight here and a two here and a five here. And then he might come down here and put a three here and a four here and then maybe a one there and so forth and so on. Maybe, let's see, he put a nine here. What, what do I have left? A six and a seven, right? So f after he did this, what he, decide, what he looked at is he noticed that in some of the rows and columns, it added up to 15. But in some places, it didn't. Mm. And so he wondered, hmm, is there a way to get 15 across in uh, di diagonally, in, um, in rows and in the columns. So when I hear you say 15, so the sum of these digits would be 15, the sum of these digits would be 15, and the sum of those digits would be 15. Exactly. All right. Exactly. That, 
That's yeah. math. That's not magic, Coach. That's math. That is I got magic math. shortly, though. That's straight math. Very good. Well, so this was um, what he called magic squares. And I, I just randomly put these in order. Can you find a 15 here? Do you see where I'm well, at a 15? Uh, right here, because I know that's a group of seven plus eight is 15. That's 15. Um, but this doesn't, this doesn't right. make 15 right here. This is nine and seven, that's 16. So not gonna work. Um, but, but we have a slide though, I yeah, think that will yeah, show us yeah. one that will work. So if you're interested in trying Ben Franklin's trick, um, his magic. Oh, look at that one right there. So look at the eight, three, and the four. And oh, I, I know that that's what you had the first. So mm -hmm. that's seven okay. plus eight's 15. And then look at the eight, one, six. The sum of those three digits is 15. 15. Now right. let's go diagonal. Okay. That's the X. So eight, five. Well, I know that's 13 plus two is 15. And if you go the other diagonal, six and four is a group of 10 plus five is 15. They all add up to 15. They all add up to 15. Try this at home. Give it a try. Here's uh, another example that, does, that maybe doesn't work kind of like this one. And then um, there are other op op options as well. If you really get, uh, would like a challenge at home, you can uh, draw a four by four square. Right. Maybe and and for this one right here, you see what you could do is just, uh, if you've ever played tic-tac-toe, basically that's the board that you're making. Plug in those number right now at home, kids, and see if you can figure out which digits are missing in that magic square. And remember the magic number is always gonna total what, Coach? Well, in a three by three, it's gonna be 15. 15. Yep. 15. That's amazing. Pretty neat, pretty neat. He's a math so, man. this would definitely not be magic, not be science, but we'd say this was math, right? Math. So we've, so we've got science, we've got math. Well, we haven't had any magic. Let's do some magic. We're you gonna make a magic? rabbit up here. All right, that would you be ready? great. Yes, yes, All right. I'd love to see that. Well, I forgot my rabbit, so okay. we can't do that. All right. But I am gonna show you a few things, a card trick, if you don't mind. Oh, I'd All love right. to see a card trick, Mr. Knitter. Now, first of all, boys and girls at home, uh, you need a standard deck of cards, which is how many cards are in a deck? 52. 52, get rid of your jokers, okay? D now, this ahead. first one is coming, I was taught this one, Mr. Ridgely, by a young lady named Bailey, a fourth grader at Mitchell Nelson Elementary. Right. And so this is really cool. So when you do this, boys and girls, what you're gonna do is you're going to get the four suits out and you're gonna put them in uh, descending order. So five, four, three, two. And then we're gonna next do the diamonds, the five, four, three, two. It does not really matter which numbers you use. You could have done all face value cards, but I've just kept these with numbers since we're talking about math. And okay. so what okay. I have done, first of all, is I've just laid these out by suits. Now, I'd just like for you to point, which stack would you like me to pick up first? Oh, I can pick any of these yes. stacks. Okay, um, this one all first. Right. I wanna do that one. And then which one? Then let's go with this red, All right. the red hearts. Followed by? Mm, we'll keep that pattern going. All right, and then this is the last one. Now, All here's right. what I'd like for you to do, is I'd just like you to cut this deck three times for me. Three times, just cut this, the deck uh -huh. anywhere. There's, All right, All right. put that one. on top. Okay. There's one. Uh, there's two. Two, uh -huh. one more. All right, I do like these kinds. And of three. Now, right. remember the order they were in. Five, yeah, five, four, four three, three two, two, one. This is called four of a kind because what I'm about to do is I'm gonna put all the fives together, all the fours together, all the threes together, all the twos together. Abracadabra, there's my magic. So. But I cut them, so. Oh, oh coach. Wait a minute. Oh, looks like I've got some magic brewing in this room <laughs> today, boys and girls. You can try this at home. This is so easy. I could teach Mr. Rich. What? Okay. All the fours, all the threes, all the twos, all the fives. Ah, I get it. Four of a kind. Now, now four that, of a kind. You think that's math or magic? I think that was some magic. You, because you did no, that. No magic I there. I cut those cards. I, I, I know up. you did. And what you did is you broke a pattern up. So really this is basically, again, mathematics is basically patterns. So we had a pattern that was already set. We broke that up when you were shuffling those, but really I went across this way next. So it did make another pattern where it put all the fours, all the threes, all the twos, and all the fives together. That is clever. I well, I like got it. another one for you. You got you like another that? one? You, oh. I, I bet Ben Franklin didn't know this trick.
trick. No, he would have loved you. that trick. He would have loved that trick. He might fly a kite and <laughs> no math, but he didn't know card tricks. Okay, So very this good. next so, one yeah. is even better. 52 cards, right? 52 So cards. what I want to do right now is I need you to help me count out. We're going to take half of 52, which is? Half of 52 would be 26. 26. Boys and girls at home, if you want to count along with me, we're going to count out 26 cards. All right. One. one. Oops. Do Get we, rid of the jokers. No jokers needed. Yeah. One, two, two three, four, five, six, six seven, seven, eight, okay. nine, ten, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. 25, 26. There's okay, your, there's, there's your 26 cards. Okay. All right. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna put these underneath here. Okay. Next. No, you don't get to touch get these. Okay. Nope. Nope. Uh, you take the magic off. All right. So uh, what I'm gonna do next, coach, is I'm gonna put three across. Okay. Now, I'm gonna add just a couple here. Okay. I can't tell you why right now, but what I'd like for you to do is this is a 10 and this is 10. What is that total? If you add those so three cards together. 10 plus 10, I know, is 20, and then I add this 8. That's okay, right. So that's, that's easy math. That's 28. 28. 28. Hold up. What are you doing? I can't tell you. It's magic. The 28th card is a 10 of spades. What do you think? No. There's two. Uh, Count with me. Okay. One, two, two three, three, four, five, five six, six, seven. seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Is this the card? You said that was a what? A 10? Of spades. Oh, magic. Abracadabra. 10 of spades. Guys. Oh, my. Ben Franklin wow. didn't know that trick either. I promise you, <laughs> no, he didn't know that trick. That would have found a way into poor Richard's almanac. That for sure. was that's, that's incredible. really cool. Now, question: Here. Magic or math? Well, I know you. I know how your mind works, and I know you're a you had that mathematical mind. It looks like magic, but I'm there's some math behind that. There's sure. a lot of math behind that. A lot. So much that I can't even break it all down in this period of time that we have. <laughs> but I will say this, boys and girls, if you'd like to try this trick at home, I also have it on our webpage at in, uh, Mitch Nielsen School. You can check that out there. Uh, but, you know, I can't disclose all my magic tricks. I because, know, I know. You Magicians know, are like that. Yes, yeah, indeed. Teachers are like that as well sometimes, right? That's right. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I have more, and I'm sure you have more, but it looks like we're about to run out of time, Coach. Well, I know. I hate that. You know, it's, it's been a lot of fun, and I hope that our, our friends that are watching on TV have learned something today uh, about science and math and Ben Franklin and clouds, and um, I hope they'll, um, I don't know, go outside maybe the next couple of days and look up, maybe take a deck of cards and learn your magic tricks here. And there's so much math you could do, boys and girls, with these. You know, take these two cards. Play war with your brother or sister. First one that adds them up gets to keep the cards. First one that subtracts them correctly gets to keep the cards. You could multiply. So, you know, cards uh, are math more than they are magic, but definitely everybody likes a card trick. Hey, indeed, that was very impressive. You'll have to show me that later. I'd like to learn how to do that one. I can't show you. I've been sworn to secrecy that I cannot show <laughs> I'll have to tricks. investigate. Okay. I'll have to find out. All right. I'll see what I can do. Well, you know what Ben Franklin says, early to bed, early rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and... Well, I'm two of the three. Two of the three? Yeah. Which one? can't tell you because I'm not wise enough. <laughs> well, anyway. But time has flown by. There's no doubt about it. And I think Ben Franklin had had another uh, saying about time. I think we're going to Let's gonna see what Ben's with, got to we're say. We're going to end with that one. And it's been a real pleasure being here today with you, Mr. Knitter. Uh, I've learned a lot, and um, I hope our audience has yeah. as well. And boys and girls, just know that your teacher